Control L. Thank you very much. So, thank you um, for the introduction. My name is Angela Holtz, and I'm here today from the German Research Foundation, but I also uh, represent the Knowledge Exchange today, and I speak on behalf also on the Knowledge Exchange, which is a cooperation of five uh, information infrastructure funders in Europe, um, especially the German Research Foundation, maybe to be uh, mentioned again, but also CHISC from the United Kingdom, the Danish Electronic Research Library in, in Denmark, SURF in the Netherlands, and CSC, the Finnish IT Center. So the initiative started in 2005 in order to, on the one hand, exchange uh, experiences in the realm of um, ICT, but also to um, work towards a well, open infrastructure, basically. So that is really the shared interest of the partners and also the mission of the activities that are undertaken in this, in this context. So what I really would like to do today is to discuss also with you um, what role the information infrastructure funders should have in the, in the future or in, the, in an open science context as, as opposed to a traditional uh, information infrastructure. And here's just a very brief overview of noise exchange activities that really relate to well, specifically open access, but also well, open science if we look at, for example, the importance of author identifiers or metrics um, as part of the infrastructure which really <coughs> help to develop uh, an, open, an open science and also um, authority files which uh, were really very closely um, studied also from a multi-national perspective and there are also recommendations now just, just, just been published on authority files and their use and implementation in open context. Um, just as you see here on the, the last uh, item here, studies on how to make open access services sustainable. Actually, that is one of the focus um, well, interests currently, focus topics um, of the initiative. And we've touched upon it uh, earlier also in discussions how important really this uh, issue is for the future development of an open infrastructure. As we see many initiatives that are really um, well, funded on a project basis, uh, supporting open access, supporting also um, other things like, for example, uh, identifiers, but then cannot uh, continue due to this uh, to this funding models. And um, the, just to make briefly familiarize you with the with the work, there's it's a really a very long uh, project with a number of phases, and you can really look at all of the different materials here in this, uh, under this web link. Um, and the, the first phases, in fact, consisted in, on the one hand, mapping uh, and scoping the different services that are actually necessary for maintaining an open access infrastructure. And many of them are super uh, nat nat national, for example, the uh, directories of open access journals, open access books, but also um, services that relate to the repository infrastructure. So the, the, the first large report really consisted in trying to see um, these, well, map the landscape but also discuss with the services themselves what challenges they see in the future, where specifically their challenges lie for maintaining their, their services. And this is all documented in a, in a report that you can also find on the web page. And then um, the third phase followed in which um, Ray Pro from Spark actually produced a report trying to figure out what business models are available for an open science, or open access, but uh, and also subsequently an open science landscape. Um, models from crowdsourcing to collective funding to membership models, all were more or less discussed also with an economic uh, perspective on how services could be run on a more sustainable basis without, um, or without public funding, but also with uh, different models of, of, of public funding. <coughs> and just to come to the major issues that are currently uh, there and for the open access services, also from the perspective of the services, um, here again you see the different types of services that I relate to, also searching services or um, identifier services. They are uh, funded on the one hand on a project basis, but they are also often not um, funded with um, specific business intelligence in, in the background or at the beginning of uh, outset of the of the project. So they are extremely 
vulnerable also um, from within because they are really funded on on a short term, but also lack um, specific staff or expertise in order to be run uh, sustainably. Um, another challenge was the organizational model, also the governance structure of services, and then um, the fact that many of these services in fact are supranational and they are also used by communities and users throughout the world, but they are on the one hand funded on a national basis and then not maintained by the international community because they are not adequate funding models yet for the users to actually maintain the, the services on an international basis. Um, and another thing that uh, occurred from this, actually I'm relating to, to a workshop in, in February, this discussion on this on this issue is that it would really be helpful and useful if we had um, a bird's eye view basically on the ecology of services that helps that help enable and maintain the, the open access infrastructure but that's currently not available who would be actually in charge of developing such an overview that was one of the of the issues that was discussed also in trying to um, take into account the dynamic landscape and uh, evolve um, the innovation of, uh, of services. And possible solutions that were discussed also is on the one hand um, that it is important um, for the services to exchange more on best practices, really. I mean, to uh, also have staff that is only there to um, look at the issue of sustainability and on. Uh, well, basically exchanging uh, experiences with, with other services. Uh, one of the, more, of the really concrete ideas that was discussed uh, at, uh, at uh, in Utrecht was in February, was the workshop I'm referring to, was whether it would be useful to have um, a supranational umbrella organization basically for the landscape to bundle open access infrastructure services. Um, and also to, to manage their sustainability, not only in terms of addressing funders, but also in terms of um, of help, I mean, providing expertise on, on an overarching level, and that is really an open, this ongoing discussion how how such a body could look like and who would actually be uh, participating in it. And another thing that was developed and uh, that will be published uh, made public very soon is the sustainability index, which is a tool that is really um, intended to help services assess their own sustainability and also help them plan beyond uh, the, the project phase. Um, and one of the maybe more provocative suggestions would be to um, ask open in the future research funders increasingly to dedicate um, fixed sums of their budget to maintaining an open access infrastructure and the services needed when they uh, require their grantees to actually deposit applications or data and software in open access uh, repositories. Now, just the, the, the very last slide, another issue that I uh, think is really whether infrastructure funders and also research funders really play an important role and will increasingly do so, is that they must fund uh, and also ensure via their project funding that technical interoperability exists by the different uh, services that they build. And also with regard to licensing, not only open source uh, re requirements are really uh, key, but the licensing of research output needs to be, if, if specified, needs to be um, specified in such a way that it's not only clear to the user, but al also that there is no, um, there are not great deviations between institutions, funders, and also um, countries. Because um, a very, un I mean, different types of licenses really make it increasingly impossible then for the researchers to use the material in an open science context. And uh, the, the last uh, item here to mention is probably the met metrics really. I think there is an increasing role also for funders to <coughs> develop tools and to support the development of tools um, that, uh, tools that are really transparent and not uh, necessarily commercial, commercialized. Well, thank you very much for this. And if there are any questions, please uh, get in touch.